God is good, and every single day that passes brings us a day closer to the launch of Pantheon Rise of the Fallen. Welcome to the Nathan Napalm channel, and if you haven't subscribed, please consider doing so, especially if you're interested in Pantheon-related content, old-school MMOs, puppets doing cringe-worthy songs and dance about MMOs, and so, so on and so forth. But today, I want to talk about why is now the time for Pantheon. Because let's face it, this idea, this concept that Brad McQuaid is hammering down into his vision, one nail at a time, is actually just going back to the days of EverQuest, which evolved to Vanguard, and now is being evolved into Pantheon. So why is now the time for the return to a classic MMO experience? I don't believe it's a coincidence that Brad McQuaid is approaching a 2019 or 2020 release of his magnum opus RPG. I think he timed it dead on. I actually think he was, I think he wanted to make this exact experience his entire life, or at least all the way back, you could say, to his early playing Ultima single player games type days. So why now? Well, that's going to take a brief little zip through MMO history to get to a conclusion, and I'm going to try to make this brief because most of you already understand it, but a couple of points here I need to point out. So around 1998-1999, the MMO genre was born. You could argue about the MUDs, uh, etc., but UO and EverQuest really molded the genre, so I'm going to start it there. Old school mechanics back then at that time, of course, that was new school for then, but basically grouping up quests the way they were handled, PvP, the way it was handled, open world, harsh leveling experience, you know, penalties to death, you know, punishments for failing in general, uh, real digital economies, and the end game raids type system that was invented. Now, that's just very basic and there was a lot more to it, but I wanted to bring up those exact ones because there were some problems that arised from that, okay? And anybody who was there remembers the classic arguments you would see in, uh, in in world chat or whatever of people complaining about issues. And these issues really boiled down to a few things. Number one, people wanted to solo. They were very upset that they were forced to group up to get a decent amount of experience. And I remember tons of people just wanted to solo. And, you know, a lot of times in some of these older games, especially like Final Fantasy XI, uh, really all of them, somebody would... Well, the community would find a particular class that they could solo, and that was the solo class, all right? And if you wanted to solo, you pick that class. But people wanted to solo. I mean, they just wanted to. They, they, maybe they played at weird times. Maybe they're socially awkward. I don't know, but they wanted to solo. People couldn't find groups during their play times was a big part of that. And people didn't have the time to invest into the game the amount of time required. So, you know, they, they had jobs, they had families, et cetera, et cetera, same as today, uh, and they just didn't have the time to invest into it. So, uh, also, big guilds were holding down a lot of the in-game camp spots for raids or gear, that kind of thing. And so, all these problems kind of culminated, and there was a general outcry into the world to get these problems fixed, to come up with a solution. Well, developers came up with solutions, all right? The developers started making their MMOs more accessible, trying to eliminate these issues. So quests became a solo option to get through the game. So now you could solo your way through the game by doing quests nonstop. And in most games, you don't even ever need to group. You can actually quest from the very beginning all the way to the end. So that gave an option for people to solo, and that's what the questing system as we know it today, that's why it exists, was to give people that option to solo through the game. The forced grouping went to instanced matchmaking. So if you were forced to group, or uh, if you wanted to group, you had the option to go into a matchmaking queue and get grouped up with what you need for the group, you know, uh, to get through this particular instance. Also, PvP tried to get more balanced by going matchmaking. 
uh, just like the, the dungeons did. So they went with the matchmaking system too with the instancing for the PvP zones. So instead of just open world like something like Dark Age of Camelot when you got to RVR and you just went in and whatever time you went in you joined whatever group is available and it could be totally unfair, right? There could be more people on one of the sides than the other two and that's just how it was for that time, right? They didn't try to balance it. I mean, they did kind of, but, uh, you know, the, it was open world. So there was o there's only so much you can do if you're not going to do a matchmaking system. So uh, the newer games started coming out. They started doing the arenas and things like that to, to make it more balanced. Also, the amount of time needed to play the game went down. Little to no rest times were needed. Group sizes were made smaller, which meant the content for the groups became less burdensome. Support classes were mixed in with healing types and tanks and DPS to nail it down to a trinity, just the tank healer DPS, so no more support classes. And the raids went, like the dungeons, to instance to get rid of that camped problem. So, basically, the MMORPG developers responded to all of the complaints that people had at that time of why they didn't enjoy their MMO or what they thought was wrong with it. So if they addressed all those problems and came up with solutions to them, then what happened? I mean, the developers gave the majority of people what they wanted. So how did we get here asking for a return back to the old way? Everything is more convenient now. Uh, so what do we have to complain about? Well, there were problems made with those solutions. So the solutions actually created some problems. Let's talk about those. Number one, is the communities perished. They just ceased to exist. There wasn't a reason for a community. There's a lot of reasons why, but the the number two thing would be that the memorable experiences that people used to have on these old games, now they felt more like single player experiences and not a shared experience. So uh, soloing through the game can be more fun, actually, on a single player game because it doesn't have the limitations that an MMO has in a shared world. So if you want to solo, people began to realize if it's so easy to solo through a game, well, I can have more fun soloing, you know, playing a single player RPG. Um, also, the content uh, began to feel kind of forced and secluded from the world because it was. The world itself felt severely useless. Uh, Interactions between players went severely down. Content was just too easy, and it didn't give any sense of accomplishment. All the content was so easy that everybody was doing it. Like, everybody could do it, and they were trying to make it more accessible so that everybody could do it, and it just became a bore. Basically, we've lost the sense of wonder the MMORPGs used to give us, and now we want to go back to the way things were. But, to go back to where we started, something has to have changed, right? So we, a large majority of us at least as gamers, kind of learned our lesson by simplifying and making things too convenient, which by the way is exactly what we asked for, it ruined our favorite genre. Will people still complain about the downtimes, about looking for groups, about camped spots, Yes, absolutely, but we now know the alternative all too well. We're more willing to accept it now and work together to make it work and help one another out because we know what the alternative looks like and what it becomes. So, are we ready for the MMO renaissance? I believe wholeheartedly that we are. We are completely jaded by the instant, solvable, questing, bland experiences of MMOs of late and we're ready to return to challenge, risk versus reward, open public dungeons, virtual economies, penalties to death, punishments for messing up. I believe that now, especially in this day and age where people are very, very tired of having their, hand, their hands held, 
you know, we're looking at not just a renaissance in the MMORPG market, but back even on single player games, where for so many years, I think it started with the uh, invention of uh, 3D games with like Mario 64, where it was new to us. So every game that came out had to kind of introduce you to how to play a 3D game. And it's like, it never went away. Like it's been many, many years. And a lot of people playing video games now never even played anything but 3D games, but it's almost like, you know, you get into a game and it tells you what to press to move every time. Like, come on, I think we basically know that. They don't wanna leave anybody out. They wanna make sure it's completely accessible. And Blizzard, for example, with World of Warcraft, really just changed everything because they made their game so accessible and so friendly to any type of player and they got such a massive amount of people on board with by being accessible that all the other uh, you know developers and everything tried to catch a piece of that magic. But we're beyond that now. We are beyond the point of wanting something to be given to us, and now we want to earn it. We want to have a reason. We want that sense of accomplishment. We want those memories that come along with it. We want to build communities, and we want a game that we feel confident in spending more and more time with and living in that world. So that's exactly what Pantheon Rise of the Fallen is giving us. And like I was uh, talking about at the beginning of the video, I don't think it's a coincidence that we're getting Pantheon at the time frame we're getting it. Because I believe that Brad smelled the change in the wind and finally realized it was his time, finally, to make this game and everything just kind of lined up for him. Okay, you got to think about it. The Kickstarter platform, you know, funding... Uh, developers and, and that way they don't have to go through a, a major uh, developing uh, publisher. Uh, so not having to go through Sony Online and not having to go through EA and etc cetera, etc. Cetera. Being able to self-fund his project so he can bring his vision to life without the burdens of the big publishers forcing him to do this and that and making it more accessible and etc etc he can actually make the game he has always wanted to make and he's never had that opportunity up until now so everything just fell in place for this perfect opportunity for him to bring his vision to life and he is running with it and that is why it's happening now and in my opinion why i think we are ready for it now and i think it's going to be a huge success i think it's going to really rock the mmo community I, now i'm not dumb i don't think it's going to rock the the genre as heavy as world of warcraft did okay i don't think we're ever going to see anything that massive happen to the MMO genre again. However, I do think this is going to open up a lot of new projects and prove that you can have a niche market, a niche idea, and make a game for a niche group of players and make it successful. And that's what I'm hoping to see with Pantheon Rise of the Fallen. And not only am I hoping to see it, that's what I can almost feel very certain is going to happen. All right, guys, so what do you think? Do you agree? Do you think that now really is the best time for the renaissance of the MMORPG? Do you think Pantheon Rise of Fallen is going to be that MMORPG? Is there anything you're worried about, or do you think maybe uh, they should slow the roll? Because they are, I feel like, in a, in, a, in a very quick development pace right now. I think they're making large strides as far as world building goes and getting everything lined up in the art and all that kind of thing. Uh, do you think that maybe, or is, does that worry you? Would you rather them slow back, or are you like me and you just want them to go ahead, let's get the game world made, let's get everything ready, and let's start getting people into alpha, and let's start testing it and hammering all the nails down. Guys, thank you for joining me for the video today. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you haven't subscribed and you enjoyed this video, please consider doing so, especially if you are interested in Pantheon-related content, because that's what we do here at the Nathan Napong channel. Until next time, guys, God bless and happy gaming.